Great. <laughs> All right. Let's hope we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us, for your love, uh, for <clears throat> being with us in our struggles and, and even giving us struggles by which you draw us closer to you. Help us as we study your word to grow in faith in you and to uh, to appreciate the blessings, both the blessings that are obvious blessings and those things that do not readily seem like <coughs> blessings to us and yet you turn them to our good. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, so Genesis 32 and 33, lots covered. We're actually going to read this one in pieces for a change because um, there's some, some definite sections, but it's sort of a... Um, it's, it's usually not taken all as, as one piece, um, but uh, the middle section is usually taken out of context, but I think it's important to look at it in its context. So, um, Are you going to break somewhere here then? Yeah, uh, j so start out with Genesis 32, 1 to 21. Okay, I'll start because I haven't read for a uh, Jacob also went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is the camp of God. So he named that place Mahamanin. Mahanayim. Mahamanayim. Jacob sent messages ahead of him to his brother Israel to the land of Siri, to the country of Edom. I knew I should know. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing about as good as I would be doing. Yeah. It gets better. You just from here on, you mainly yeah. just need to After know. After this, you, uh, yeah, it does get Esau. better. <laughs> <laughs> and he instructed them, "This is what you are." to say to my master Esau your servant Jacob says I have been staying with Laban and have remained there till now I have cattle and donkeys sheep and goats men servants and maid servants now I am sending this message to you my lord that I may find favor in your eyes when the messengers returned to Jacob they said we went to your brother Esau and now he is coming to meet you and 400 <laughs> men are with him in Great fear and distress, Jacob divided the people who were with him into two groups, and the flocks and herds and camels as well. He thought, if Esau comes and attacks one group, that group that is left may escape. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Esau, I said, O Lord, who said to me, Go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am worthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Save me, I pray, for the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper, and you will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. Is that as far as... Um. If you want, or to 21 exactly. 21, okay. He spent the night there, and from what he had with him, he selected a gift for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams. How does that figure out? There's a lot. 200 goats and 20 males. That's so about right. 200 <laughs> females, 20 males. Because you need more females if you want to, you know. That was just bad. It'd be funny. <laughs> That's probably doable. <laughs> <laughs> he put them in the care of his servant, each herd by itself, and said to his servants, Go ahead of me and keep them, keep some space between the herds. He instructed the one in the lead, When my brother Esau meets you and asks, To whom do you belong and where are you going? And who owns all these animals in front of you? Then they are to say, They belong to your servant Jacob. They are gifts sent to my to my lord Esau, and he is coming behind us. He also instructed the second, third, and all the others who followed the herds, You are to say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. And be sure to say, Your servant Jacob is coming behind us. For he thought, I will pacify him with these gifts. I am sending on ahead later when I see him, perhaps he will receive me. So Jacob's gifts went on ahead of him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. All right. You ever had a meeting you dreaded to go to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Has anyone <coughs> ever tried to buy your forgiveness? I remember one time I was I was at the grocery store and uh, and I picked up some flowers for my wife. Mm-hmm. And, and and I go to check out and the and the clerk goes, mm, what did you do?" Uh-huh. <laughs> Nothing. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? Like what? I can't be. I can't the, just buy some flowers for my wife just because I love standard. her. You know, <laughs> I must have done something wrong. That's the standard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, has anybody ever had it? Either, either you trying to buy somebody else's forgiveness, or or somebody else trying to buy your forgiveness, for that matter. Yeah, and sometimes maybe it's not buying forgiveness. Maybe it's realizing what a jerk you were, and then you you come to yourself and decide, oh, I need to do this better. Not that you're actually, you know, like if you did something and and you try to make it better. It, I don't know if that's actually buying forgiveness. It okay. may it may just be coming to your senses <laughs> and going to yourself, oh, I really shouldn't have done that, or I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have forgotten that, or whatever. Or, or just trying to undo some of the damage you've done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when husbands don't listen to their wives, and all of a sudden they're being very attentive, you know, you think, well, gee, maybe they thought I should have maybe listened more. You know, things like that. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just like, I see that. You know? <coughs> but oh, oh, there. <laughs> I've Stunt. seen it before. <laughs> yeah. Or it could be the other way around. Maybe a wife doesn't listen to it. You know, I'm not saying just one way. Okay. It could be to both ways. Speaking of very general things. Yeah, very, very, very much. Um, Alright, why did Esau try to uh, bring 400 men with him? So they could split it in two groups. (laughs) (laughs) To get them both that way. (laughs) Probably back up, I guess. I don't know for sure. That's what it sounds like, but. I'm probably wrong. Well, maybe he take. heard that Jacob had a bunch of people with him, and he wasn't sure himself what what was going to be happening. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know that I've ever read anything about that. You see, it's, you know, it's like, it's like a Cold War. <laughs> I was going to say, if he didn't, if he was expecting trouble, he didn't have to go, right? Yeah, well, it's just I got this message from Jacob, like, what are you up to? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and given his past experience with Jacob, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, uh, so he's going to protect himself this time. <laughs> Other times, Jacob caught him off guard. This time, like, all right, yeah, you've uh, you've duped me a couple times, and it did not work out well for me, so this time I'm bringing back up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I would have just stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't know, it seems like he wants to make amends, or 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 accept Jacob's apology. Um, Esau didn't really have anything to apologize for, um, but you know, it 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 seems like he's he's missing his brother, you know, and and would like to, um, you know, to settle things and. And, and be family again. So, all right. How do you think Jacob felt about this meeting? Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. All right. Yeah. You you see the the all this. All right. Now, see him. This is what you say. All right. Your servant Jacob. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. Repeat them back. All right. Now, as you walk, say those words over and over. (laughs) 
If they ask you any questions, just repeat what I said. <laughs> All right. Um, so then we have, we have this prayer um, in verses 9 through 12. What does Jacob's prayer tell you about what's going through his mind as he prepares? Right. O God of my father Abraham, of my father Isaac, Lord, who said to me, Go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown to your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers and their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper, and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. Right, what's going on here with this prayer? Reassurance, I guess. Right. I think he's trying to remind <laughs> my God of what he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I mean, right. I'm going to this meeting, and you, you told me. You promised. Yeah. Right. I'm holding you to That's it. That's right. <laughs> I don't still, have kids yet. <laughs> he's still not saying, "Oh my God." He's saying, "Oh God of my father Abraham and my father of his father or my uh -huh. father Isaac." Yep. So, hmm, let's see what happens. Yep. Um, oh, I'm, I have to correct myself. He did have kids, but not a lot. I mean, they hadn't multiplied yet. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's he's, he's real nervous. And he's going, all right, God, come on. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're supposed to watch out for me. Yeah, this, this reminds me of um, when the... Um, oh, when Jesus is doing the healings or feeding the 5,000 and stuff like that. And the people are all going to him, not for forgiveness and, and salvation and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, hey. Just in time. Let me make you a copy. Um, they're, they're going to him because he can, uh, he can fix them. He can right. deal with their immediate needs. And... Uh, Um, and and he's he can well he can he can feed us he can heal my disease or mm -hmm. you know or whatever and it's not uh, it, it it's it's not like oh this is this is the God of my salvation you know right um, it's very different and in fact that's why um, why Jesus actually left at one point after feeding was it feeding the five thousand. Um, or was it the fourth? I always get those two mixed up. But um, where he actually leaves because they wanted to make him their king. And why? Because he filled their tummies. Yeah. Right. Not because they recognized him as this is the Lord of the universe who has come to save us. That's why he kept telling his disciples not to tell anybody what he was, the miracles he was performing, because he wanted them coming to him just for the miracles. Mm -hmm. We just did the first section. Re you ready, ready for this section now? So, um, <clears throat> all right. So, any other, any other thoughts before we move on to the next section? So far, all right? Jacob's real nervous, and uh, and he's he's trying to. It's almost like he's trying to kind of. Grab God by the by the nose ring and, and go. Come on, you know, you you're you're under my control because you made this promise and I'm going to hold you to it and you can't go back on it because you're God and you don't break your promises. Well, this is a typo, right? I mean, this is 32, not. I mean. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to go should, backwards and I, No, it, you're right. You're it's right. Not That's possible. Just, I'm sorry. That should say 32. You're okay. Right. No big deal. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I don't like abbreviations, and I don't like... <laughs> well, you weren't here. No. I figured yes, out... Yes, you were. No, I, I figured out why I wasn't here last week. It was Larry's birthday. Oh, We were celebrating his birthday. Okay. Did you? Yeah. We were celebrating a birthday, too. That's right, you were. I yeah. Mean, Larry pointed out to me that Chloe's birthday was the same yeah. day. So, we just did it in the afternoon. 
<laughs> I'm more self-righteous than you are. Oh wait, no, that's not. <laughs> I knew that, and I was just so upset because I thought oh, I'm going to miss one. Pastor's going to be there. Was it this deep from the get-go tonight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was. It was bad. We were talking about how many sources when their ears go one way or the other way. <laughs> I they, figured I they probably like missed about 15 minutes of some really good conversation. When, it, <laughs> when the army shore stops at the traffic light, he's idling. No, no, it's not a traffic light. Oh, it stops it. It's just an intersection, you know. Maybe a traffic light, he could idle. I mean, he could just relax. <laughs> he could but really at relax, an intersection, he should be over to the side of the road. Yeah, but he's <laughs> at an intersection, he's got to be ready when there's an opening. So his he is. He's, you right. can tell. You he got those reins, I mean? and he's, he's like got, this. He's got the foot on the gas. And yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he's rip. got the reins a little wow. bit, yeah. not yeah, all the way. <laughs> pretty deep stuff here. Yeah. Hey, it really is. If you had to drive that buggy, you'd think it was deep to pull out in that traffic. Right. You had to walk behind the horses. You think it'd be pretty oh, deep. Oh, very. <laughs> you ain't kidding. That's what I mean about pulling to the side of the road. You know, just the. And Sorry. that's what Larry was saying about our tires when we got home. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Um, verse 22 uh, through 32. Somebody got it? Somebody besides me. I already messed that up. That night Jacob got up, took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of Jab Jab Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he went over all his his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. Bless you. God bless you. And okay. and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could n not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, "Let me go." for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked, What is your name? Jacob, he, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will be no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the, the place Peniel, Peniel mm -hmm. saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. All right, hence our conversation about pulling someone's leg. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, why does the struggle between God and Jacob occur at this particular point in Jacob's life? All right, look at what was just going on. Well, he was praying to God earlier mm -hmm. and asking for his help, for deliverance. I think he was, do you think he was actually praying or reminding? It does say pray, but... Well, well reminding. Maybe the same thing, huh? Praying is talking to God, regardless of the yeah. topic of the conversation. And he was left alone. And then he's by himself, yeah. And again, he referred to God as God of my fathers, not my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I have my suspicions. He's kind of a turning point in his life, correct? I mean, yeah. right now he's leaving what he was comfortable with for at least 14 years anyway. And now he's going to meet his brother who, when he last left, yeah, his brother, if he could have put his hands on him, would have killed him. And I think that's all fresh still in his mind, but yet here he is embarking to go back where he came. You know, here, Jacob, in a sense, is sort of hit rock bottom. 
All right. Even though he's got all these flocks and herds and, you know, and all this kind of stuff, he's got a lot of money. He's got family, you know, and all of that. But he has burned all of his bridges. Even he's got them, nowhere yeah. else to go. He's uh, he's turned his brother against him. Um, we have this episode that we skipped where he um, he cheats Laban out of um, out of all kinds of, of flocks and herds. It's half the stuff that he has is stuff that he cheated to Didn't get. Didn't change much, oh. did he? Huh. All right. So here he's just he's he's dug himself such a deep hole that he's just like he can't get out by himself. Yeah. I next yeah. time I turn around, somebody's gonna kill me. Yeah, he, he, I don't know if he, in his own mind, was felt justified for kind of paying Laban back for what Laban did to him with his daughters, too, you know? I mean, sure. it could have been partly motivated by that. You really don't know. Right. But what it comes down to is he was a wanted man. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, he was a fugitive from his own family. And uh, the black sheep of the family. And then some. You know, yeah. he's the black sheep of the family. Everybody just wants him to stay away. Now, the thing I in this case, yeah. they would have liked to hunt him down. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I don't understand, we have the vantage point now of, as I said, where this section, at least in, in my NIV, is where we're reading Jacob wrestles with God, but it never specifically said that that's what he did. And I'm kind of just trying to grasp that in my mind. It just says that a man came and he wrestled with him. Number one, what provoked this guy to wrestle with Jacob in the first place once he was alone? And then to sit there and... Can you imagine even as, as men, I mean, for that constant engaging, it, it, you'd have to be physically tired. I mean, you know, even with a wrestling match, I mean, you know, if it's 15, 20 minutes, it, it, you're pretty exhausted. Yeah. And, and then for this guy, for Jacob to say, well, I've seen God face to face and was spared, I, I, I guess I just wonder what... How did he really know? I mean, that it was an angel or it was God? I guess that's I, I, that's where I'm... I mean, obviously it, it was, but I just don't know by just reading that. Is there anything that just really points that out? Well, in, in verse 28 it says, The man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God uh, and with men and mm -hmm. have overcome. So, But that does lead to, to an interesting question. All right, so, so here, this is that point. First of all, as, as far as sort of this point in his life, um, you know, this is it's like he's he's dug himself into such a deep hole. He can't get himself out. He's he's he's, he's stressed. He's worried. You can tell he's just like I, I need to spend the night alone. I need to figure this out, you know, and stuff. And, and along comes God and says, "All right, let's go." And, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so, and so this is but this is the time where where he's finally ready for God to step in. All right, I mean, because. You talk about wrestling, you know, all night, okay? He's been wrestling with God all his life, mm -hmm. you know, and and so so God says, all right, and you know, this is this is something that we, I was talking to um, to some pastors about, not about this particular section, but the way that God uses illustrations, right? Because we were talking about sort of what you um, should or shouldn't or kind of can't do, like you know, worship service as far as illustrations and things like that, and. Uh, different you know sounds that are used and, and different things and and uh but we said you know one thing about god is that god likes to use very vivid illustrations you know and, and you talk about about jesus parables but then you got jesus um you know walking on water calling a storm cursing a fig tree all right what was the point of that? it was purely for the sake of illustration and um, and he, he he did it to a plant, not an animal, so he would not incur the wrath of Peta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, probably was somebody around back then. He yeah. cooked fish though too, so you know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the, and that's the New Testament. The Old Testament, you have you have hey Hosea, Hosea, go marry a prostitute. Mm -hmm. You've got. Uh, the, that whole what was it Ezekiel the um all right, I want you to Sunday lay on your yeah. side and you know and then lay on the other side and cook some food over human um, feces and and uh, and, was, and mm -hmm. he goes no hold on a minute here <laughs> and God goes all right fine you can use cow dung instead like, no, oh yay great. there you go mm. <laughs> that's much better mm. <laughs> and, you know, so you know God uses all these these very vivid 
descriptions. And then that's not even counting revelation, you know. And, uh, and, and so he, here we have this here where God, just for the sake of illustration, takes on human form and goes and wrestles all night with this guy. You know? mm -hmm. And um, so you know, God loves pictures. He loves illustrations, and, and let's let's really bring this home, and not just sort of um, hand it to you as a textbook and say, here, figure it out. That's part of that passage where he says, because you have struggled with God, and that's what I mean. Literally, it doesn't even have to apply for just that evening. Right. I mean, you're right. His whole life, he's struggled with him. So that's kind of why, I don't know. Yeah, I could yeah. be reading too much. No, he's, he's bringing it home. Goes, Look, this is what you've been doing. You know, aren't you exhausted from struggling with God? Aren't you Aren't you done struggling with God? Especially now that I wrenched your hip out of joint. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. Okay. That so, ought to remind him for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, have you ever wrestled with God? Sure. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Right. I think everybody has to have at some point. There's times, you know, whether it's trying to, you know, sometimes it's, it's wrestling with God in the sense of trying to stay away from Him. Would you just leave me alone? <laughs> Worst thing to ask. You know? <laughs> Isn't it? Worst Isn't thing it? to ask. <laughs> but, you know, it's like I'm trying to <laughs> do this and you keep leading me into things where I'm not comfortable and, and, and just what I think I've got to figure it out, you throw something else my way and I, you know. <laughs> my plate's full. Mm -hmm. Or you're not trying to do. You're trying not to do something you know you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. And then he, yeah. you know, throws you into the sea and has you swallowed by a fish. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's another good one. So I, you know, that was I. For me, it was um, it was when I was a freshman in college, and and the uh, everybody kept coming to me going, "You make a good pastor." No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not my plan. <laughs> no kidding, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was just like Jonah. You were running fast, weren't you? I, I, yeah. I could just see your feet going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I, I was, I was majoring. I mean, it, it's really amazing because it, it, my plan never would have worked. Um, because I wanted to be a psychiatrist, I majored in psychology. You don't major in psychology when you want to be a psychiatrist. You major in pre med. No so I was already going down the wrong path for what I wanted to do. Wow. And I didn't figure that out until like a couple years later. I think your counselor should have told you that. You'd think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe your yeah. counselor but, knew something you did. You know, when you go to a giant school, you, it's not like you sit down and, and talk to a counselor. Yeah. You just kind of figure it out for yourself. Yeah. And if you have questions, you go ask. But if you don't have questions, they're not going to hunt you down. I'm sure that's true. So. Wow. Yeah, and you but, have to make an appointment, and about three months later, you get to see somebody. Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, and you know, and then I couldn't get the classes. I wanted clinical psychology, and all I kept, the only thing that was open by the time I'd go to register was experimental psych, and I did not want to do experimental psych, but that was all the classes I could get. And, and I was just like, this is just not working. <laughs> and it was like God was going, no, no, over here. <laughs> and, and, and so I, you know, no, I'm going this way. Bam! Roadblock. You know? Ow. Ow. Like, like, but that's not, but I, you know. <laughs> and finally it's just like, okay, fine. <laughs> was it just the light finally went on, or? You know, I, I it was, I was sitting in our church library. And I was, and I was just, I was, um, I was supposed to be leading a, a Bible class for college age um, people, and the only person that ever came was my best friend, and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and and he was usually more just interested in shooting the breeze, and and it was like it was, but I, so I was just sitting there one day by myself in the library, hoping that somebody would show up, and and I was just kind of, sort of reading the names of the books on the rack. Oh, well, that looks interesting. I'd like to read that sometime. And I'm kind of going down the, the list, and I'm going, wow, this stuff all looks really fascinating. And I kind of hit it. If I went to seminary, I'd have to read half of that stuff. It'd be assigned. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, I really do enjoy theology. You know, and it was just kind of like, 
but no, oh, but you know. <laughs> and, That's uh, amazing. Yeah. And and finally, it was really the I think that the straw that broke the camel's back. And this this sounds really bad if you sort of take it out of context. Cause I got a C in calculus. And uh, and and I, I and I've always been good at math, but I was just really struggling. And that was with with the first calc class, and I knew I had to take two more after that. And I heard that the second one was the really hard one. <laughs> and I went, I can't do this. And it, you know, and it's and it's not that I that I like flunked out, so I became a pastor instead. You know. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. That's kind of what it sounded like. I know, I know, doesn't it? Doesn't it? But what it was is what I realized was I am trying to do something that God has not called me to do. All right? And I'm trying to say, no, I can do it. I can do it. And God was saying, no, you can't. <laughs> All right? Because that's not what you're going to do. That's not what I wanted you to do, right? Yeah. And, and so you're going to do this other thing instead. And um, and so... Uh, okay. How privileged is that, though, you know what I mean? To actually get that and understand that finally and say, okay, you're, you're well, you know? You know, and it was so funny because, like, once I figured that out or stopped running away, then it was, just, oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and everything just sort of fell into place. I... Um, I, I was still sort of in the middle of my psych major or whatever, and and, um, and I, I still wanted to take psychology classes, and um, and um, but I was always interested in the theater, and, and I thought it'd be really great to major in theater, but there's no way I could, you know, that's not a really making a living um, unless you can. You got to pay the bills <laughs> when you're done with this. Yeah, thing. and especially theater, not like you know. Um, TV or movies right. or something like that. This is live theater. It's like there's money to be made in TV and movies, not so much in live theater unless you can get like Broadway or something like that, you know. And uh, and and so, which is you know your chances are pretty slim. And and uh, but uh, it would be fun just to take classes and, and stuff like that. And and so I um, I talked to the admissions counselor uh, for the seminary <laughs> and said, you know, what should I do? Should I like switch and go to Concordia and take pre-sem classes or something like that and he said no keep doing what you're doing because it'll give you'll be a lot more well-rounded mm. and um and he said you know if you can take Greek and Hebrew um before you get there before you get to seminary that'll help you out what he should have said was but don't take them the same year oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I can see that oh, but uh but you know and and like my theater classes filled my, what was it? My theater classes filled my uh, humanities requirement. My psychology classes filled my social studies requirement. So I didn't. I managed to made to graduate with two majors and didn't have to take any extra classes. And no and, more calculus. And and I didn't have to take another <laughs> <laughs> math class. <laughs> so I, I mean, it was just like things just kind of worked out, and and I went, oh, okay. <laughs> That's really good, but that does explain why you enunciate very well too, and your sermons. Uh, you, you know really what? do though. You're very dramatic on the sermon delivery. But, you know, I took one acting class. Most of my, I had a general theater major, and um, and so it was mostly literature, um, like uh, a lot of reading, other plays and, and things like that, history of theater, and um, uh, a lot of backstage work. Um, which backstage work is completely useless unless you're actually working in the theater because everything is designed to be easy to whip together and, and easy to break it apart afterward to read the stuff. So no, it's not it really like isn't good. It's yeah. not like it comes in handy as like when there's stuff broken in the house or anything because <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my skills are all in making things so that they'll break easily. And I, I mean, one of my projects that I had to do was was building a door that someone could easily put an axe through, you know. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so, That's but, uh, though. yeah, I, it was, yeah, the, the one acting class, I was, I would have liked to take the other one, but I, I couldn't fit them in, but, um, so, so yeah, it, the stuff has come in handy, you know, that, that I learned, but, um, but, uh, yeah, even things like lighting and things like that, I took a lighting class, and, 
So, but you know, what it comes down to is I, you know, I, I learned a lot and it gave me a, I, maybe if anything, it introduced me to a lot of people that I never would have run into otherwise. Because theater people are their own people. They don't live in the same world we live in. And I, wow. <laughs> you know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like just I mean, their clothes alone are they all wear capes and tons of jewelry <laughs> and it's always velvet and satin and heavy very makeup. Col- very makeup. colorful. Yeah, really? Yeah, 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 even when well, they're not on stage. The ones yeah. at our college too. Yeah. You know, you could always pick. Yeah. I spent theater, a week theater, with, the, theater. <laughs> with the, theater, wow. the theater group at Overland College. I spent a week on tour with them. They don't yeah. even live in the same planet yeah. that I lived in. I mean, but it was great because I'd sit down in the in the um, the green room, the, um, the sort of lounge area, and um, and I eat my lunches. And I didn't really fit in with that group. I mean, I had a few friends that I like to mess around with during some of our backstage classes and stuff. But, you know, for the most part, I didn't really fit in with that group. But I would just sit there and eat my lunch and listen and, and watch. And, and it was just like, this is so fascinating. <laughs> but it really it gave me exposure to people that, that I wouldn't have had. And, and so, you know, in that, I, I learned a lot that way. And, um, and I just, you know, the, the experience was a great experience. And it was the sort of thing that, that um, you know, when I got to seminary, I, I met the guys that majored in pre sem and and I knew that I never would have fit in with those guys. Mm, interesting. And uh, God must have known that. Too. You know, and the, and the funny thing is, to this day, I don't really, <laughs> you know, the guys that majored in pre a long time ago. Boy, I. We still just don't always see things eye to eye, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, they get you ingrained into just certain things, and then it doesn't enable you to... Well, you get you end up with a... And, and I'm not saying that nobody should major in pre sound but you sort of have to have your... you gotta you got to be able to think for yourself, you know, because, unfortunately, sometimes you can sort of just become like a puppet, you know, and um, and it, it's just like, okay, you know, it's sort of that whole, um, oh, it's the... Um, cooperate and graduate, you know, and, uh, yes. and they, they sort of get that mindset, <laughs> yeah. And then like it never goes away even after they graduate, and and it just sort of, and and so we don't get. I mean, like and it works for them, and and they're good pastors, and you know, and I'm not, but it's just we have a very different way of looking at things, mm-hmm. and um and so I and and I'm sure that God puts them in places where that works, yeah, and um and a lot of them are in Iowa. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Well, that's. I mean, I can't speak for everybody here because I'm more recent than those people. But it was very refreshing and different. Your first Easter here, especially just before they started that service. And I mean, I know that's your most favorite, awesome time of the year, and it, it should be for all of us because it's really the whole reason why we have the hope we have. But. I never had a pastor. Just, he is risen. I mean, the whole. I think half the people and are like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it's like I don't. I don't know if you folks ever had a pastor like that. I never had a pastor just that out. You know, just loud, boisterous, just excited. I mean, yeah. I, it really took Pre- me back. Was, oh, I was just going to say. Was a, did he like got up in the. No, he was a dynamic speaker during during Lent, and and he was Peter and. They were questioning, weren't you with him? And finally he goes, damn it, I tell you I'm not. That's about what Peter said. Yes, so, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, he was dying we've had speaking. one. Yeah, really so we were, <clears throat> we have to give him that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I just, I thought that was so <laughs> awesome. Too bad it was that yeah. yeah. strange. <clears throat> but we weren't, all, we weren't all raised Lutherans, you see. Some of us. Southern Baptist? Well, not quite. Catholic. Methodist. Oh, no, I don't know. I've had yet to go to a Catholic church. And it, it, it just, i never seen anybody, and that's not to say there isn't, but I've never had one. That just, when I went to a church, hey, it's just let me tell you something. dynamic. The Roman Catholics are responsible for bringing theater back. Um, theater was outlawed for a while because it got so, um, so bloody. Um, that they, they, they just outlawed it all together. It was just, it was horribly immoral and, and stuff that was going on. And oh, like it is now. 
Oh. <laughs> well, wow. it can be now. Not but, uh, always. Is. But it was it, it was be. outlawed for, I don't know, like a hundred years or something like oh, that. Oh wow. Okay. And then it was actually brought back on Easter. A couple of priests oh. did a uh, uh, Easter pageant. It was in the the. I mean, there's this Latin quem queritus. Um, whom are you looking for? And um, and that that's a there's my theater history for you. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, that it was it was the church that where there was a, some priests sort of acted out this the women going to the tomb and um and and the angel asking them who are you looking for and uh and so that was what brought the theater back and then after that they had the the mystery plays uh where they'd sort of act out scenes from the bible and and things like that and um and then then, then the theater picked up after that uh, but it was actually the church well i mean it, it was the church that outlawed it but it was also the church that brought it back, and um, so That's if anybody ever complains about theater in the church and you know acting things out and stuff like that, there's a 500-year historical precedent for it. <laughs> I, I'm just saying it's it's good. You know? so, it's, I didn't know that. Mm, I yeah. didn't either. All right. Um. Why does God wrestle all night? Is he that weak? What's what's the deal here that that he can't overpower him? That's interesting because you know he can. So right. why didn't he? He was waiting for Jacob to realize. Yeah. What he, he wasn't going to overcome him. <coughs> You're right. messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> You're bucking the ox cart, palsy. You know. Yeah. Right. This is like I, when I was in high school, we would play. Uh, we called it Roman knuckles or mercy or something like that, where you you know kind of go like this and you try to get the guys. So that they're going like this, you know, and, and, and then when it hurts too bad, you say mercy and then you lose. All right. Well, just because I'm tall. We have no idea what you're talking we about. We've <laughs> never heard oh, yeah. really that. Because you really do. You want to try to get it down well, and get yeah, it back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe we girls did something else. I don't know. Yeah, probably. This is, you know, this is like yeah. the guy version of like Rams, you know, butting head. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally, you want to be the guy to get him underneath and just be down since, there breaking his wrist since back I'm tall, going back like that. I had the you know leverage, Advantage. <laughs> you know, but but I also have not a lot of feeling in my wrists and a very high pain threshold. <laughs> That'd be a terrible helps. tunnel. <laughs> it helps. So so I would actually I could I could go, all right, um, I'll you know I I always want to challenge people and nobody would would take me up. and so I go. All right, tell you what, I'll give you 20 seconds where I will not resist, and you can do whatever you want. Really? Okay. And so I just, I like sit there where most people like a second of it, they're they're going, all right, mercy, you know stuff, and 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 I just sit there like, mm -hmm. and they're, all right, all right, all right, you know, and, and and it was just because I had a really high pain threshold, and and so I just sit there and and like, okay, 20. <laughs> you know, and, and that was it. And, wow. um, so, but you know, it was, it was that sort of thing that, like, okay, go ahead, you know, do your worst. Let's see how it goes, you know. And uh, it's incredible. That was, and it was, it wasn't because I was really strong. It was purely because I had leverage. <laughs> 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 but you know, but yeah, here God is saying, all right, uh, yeah. you know, I'll give you, a, I'll give you all night. Yeah, I'll give you all night here. <laughs> see how you do. Uh. Okay, so and then so who wins? I think Jacob wins. I still say God does. Well, I think ultimately thing. God does. I mean, because even though he says that you struggle with God and you've overcome, uh, I think that was the outcome God wanted him to have and to give him that kind of confidence mm -hmm. to know, hey, you know. You well, that might be true, but I think Jacob comes out better for it. Well, right. I mean, ultimately, yeah. It's right. to Jacob's advantage that yeah. things turn out the way they yeah. do. All right. So, but, okay, so notice, though, how does God sort of get Jacob to stop? He cheats. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. He's cheating the cheat. <laughs> he pulls an illegal move on him. Yeah. Hold on a minute there. That's not regulation, <laughs> you know. You, just oh. sort of, you just sort of imagine an angel going, Whoa, hey, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> make it hurt. <laughs> All right. So, um. All right. So, yeah. So, God God kind of cheats. All right. So, yeah. Cheating the cheater. 
okay? Um, but, you know, at, at the same time, God is saying, look, I could have done this to you at any point, right? But you just, you'll keep on struggling until I literally cripple you. That's the only time that you can stop running away from me, that you can stop fighting me, is when I cripple you. Right? And mm -hmm. sometimes that's what we need. We need God to cripple us, whether it's literally, physically, or that we need Him to sort of trip us up when we land flat on our faces and go, oh, whoa. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, you know, I think you're both right. You know, God definitely showed that that He was the winner. That in the sense that He was able to. Um, he was in control the whole time, right. but but Jacob was the one that really benefited from it. That's what it. I think. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. At any time, any point in time, you know, God could have done obviously whatever He wanted to do. So mm -hmm. the point yeah. was to teach him, or to make him succumb, or to teach him. So that I don't know. That's just the way He did it. Mm -hmm. As far if it was a battle, He there wasn't any, there wasn't a battle. It could be a win-win basically on both sides. That's really. what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 Here's the thing to keep in mind with God. Everything that God does is for us. Mm -hmm. For our good. Everything he does. Right. If he if he'd have if he'd have put Jacob down like he could have, what what good would that have done anyone? Right. Yeah. As long as Jacob kept having that hope that man, I'm still going after all night. I, I might still be able to get this guy. I might yeah. be able to take this guy, you know. Yeah. No one would have learned anything. Right. Except that you get really tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, he had to be whipped. He yeah. had to be whipped. He, he'd probably say, well, wait till next time. <laughs> I'm going to sleep or eat before or whatever. Yeah. All right, so what does Jacob's new name, Israel, mean? He struggles with God. With God struggles right? with God. Which, yeah, he's done his whole life. How much different is that than each of us, really, when you think about it? I, I'd be lying to say I still don't struggle because right. I do. So, and this is, this is an important name, all right? Now we look at the nation of Israel. Did they struggle with God? Yeah, they were stiff-necked people. Right? And in their entire history, yep. they struggled with God, mm -hmm. all right? All right, then we have Jesus becomes the epitome of Israel, all right? He takes on Israel's sin um, <coughs> and, and all of our sin, really. Um, but he, he becomes, he's, you know, uh, we have out of, out of Egypt I called my son which is a reference to Israel, all right? But it's also a reference to Jesus, all right? So did Jesus struggle with God? Sure, because he was still man. Sure. Look yeah, at the but, garden, mm -hmm. all right? When he was in the garden, when he's hanging on the cross, crying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah, he was struggling with God. All right? He wasn't resisting him, but he was still, It was. this was a stressful thing. Oh, we can't I could have tell you something, this is so weird. I went from church. I had to go to Home Depot. Well, I live in Home Depot. Okay. I'm walking down to Home Depot. Here's this guy. Oh, this is weird. It's creepy. And, he, and he's scruffy kind of looking, but he's got a beard and everything. And he's buying a mailbox uh, thing. You know how they come? It's, it's, it looks just like a cross. And he's carrying this <laughs> cross and it up to the camera. Oh, my God. I stopped and got chill looking at this guy. Holy cow, look at this guy. <laughs> I grabbed my brother. Oh my God, look at that thing. <laughs> it was so weird. He could have carried it any other way, you know, but he's got it over his shoulder and he's kind of scruffy looking with a beard. And everything. Oh Did he have on sandals? No. <laughs> oh man, I think no. that would have put Bud over the oh. top. <laughs> <laughs> no. That would have been it. <laughs> Alright, so, so yeah, Jesus becomes Israel and then the church is the, in the book of Romans it says the church is the new Israel right and so um, and so you have you know do we struggle with God as, as the church yeah absolutely yeah right and so we see that you know the, the importance of that name now where did you find that out well how do you know Israel means I mean you already know that right? it's on the bottom of my thing yeah it's a footnote it's a footnote it says it's Israel means he struggles with God in, in in what in theory in Hebrew Hebrew okay I'm sorry yeah in, in theory my you know deep knowledge of the Hebrew language you know that I would have just known that off the top of my head but uh -huh. it was something I learned a long time ago and 
And I know that. The, I never knew that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Anytime you, you see L. Um, L is God. Yeah, L means God. All right. And uh, so, like, Israel, Samuel. Oh, okay. Um, you know, Bethel. Bethel, yeah. There's, there's like, all these names in Hebrew that end in L. It's like, anytime you see El a name. Shittah. Yeah, all right. Um, and then anytime you see a name ending in Yah, Jeremiah, um, Isaiah, um, that's Yah as in Yahweh, Jehovah, God's God's name. And um, so so both of those, anytime you, you see those names, those are references to God in, in some Interesting. way. Interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so like Jesus' name in, in Hebrew is, is actually Joshua um, or or. Yeshua, or the the Yeshua, you yeah. there is um, it can, is also an I. It depends how it contracts in that, but that's Yah at the end of his name. Or no, I'm sorry, no, at the beginning. I'm sorry, I got it backwards. Um, yeah, Yah, Shua, Yahweh saves. Which is really cool when you think about that. You know, yeah. Jesus is Yahweh. He's he's not just like he <coughs> saves me or you know or or he he has saved me or something like that. It's, I am, I'm him. Mm. All right, and I've come to save you. That's his perfect name. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. All right, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to stop there because we're over time. Um, we'll brush over this, the rest of this briefly next time. You can hold me. Yeah. Oh, there's something really important. Well, it's the Bible. It's all really important. It's the Word of God. Break words on. And the ABS words on. It's all right there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Your Toyota? Uh-huh. Your, what is it, a Yaris? Uh-huh. So your brake light and your ABS lights on? It's going to be terrible noise. And it breaks. Let's close it there. <laughs> <laughs> that was getting kind of deep there. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you that um, when we when we run away from you, when we um, try to go our own mm-hmm. way, that, that you'll come and, and you're willing to wrestle with us instead of just striking us down. <coughs> and um, and when we need you to, to wrestle with us for a while so that we can figure things out, so that you can point things out to us and, and, and help us to see without just beating us down right away, that you're willing to do that. And, and so, but we pray that you open our hearts and, and enable us to, to see your will for us without having to be crippled. Uh, but if that's what we need, we pray that you do that too. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.